Hello, welcome to part two of the video on equivalence classes. My name is Professor Michael Polyuk. In this video, we're going to prove the following theorem. If E is an equivalence relation on the set X, and you have two equivalence classes that share at least one element, then they actually have to be the same equivalence class. This proof is somewhat technical, and it's helped a lot by a diagram. So we're going to prove everything formally using algebra and logic, but we'll use a diagram to help us know where to go, right? So basically we have an entire uh, like uh, wall of switches that we could flick, and we're going to use a diagram to help us decide which one of those things to flick that will make all the lights turn on. One way of interpreting this theorem is as follows. If you take the set X, then all of the equivalence classes um, partition the space. So each point will belong to exactly one equivalence class, unless the equivalence classes are just are the same. So it separates the space into parts. Now let's see the proof. We're going to use as much of a definition unwinding proof as we can, so we'll follow our noses for the first little bit. We're trying to prove an implication, so let's assume the premise. Assume that these two equivalence classes uh, intersect in a non-empty set. What does this mean? It means they're not disjoint. It means there's a Z, which is an element of X, such that Z is in both equivalence classes. What does it mean to be in each of the equivalence classes? It means that X is related to Z, and it means that Y is related to Z. Okay, so far so good. That's what the premise means. Now what are we trying to prove? We're trying to prove that the equivalence class of X is equal to the equivalence class of Y. How do you show that two sets are equal? Well, we use double subset. Now let's start with an element of the first equivalence class. What does this mean? If A is in the equivalence class of X, it means that X is related to A. Now, what are we trying to show? We're trying to show a subset. So we need to show that if we start with A in the equivalence class of X, then A has to be in the equivalence class of Y. And that means that Y is related to A. So now we're probably thoroughly confused. We've unwrapped all of our definitions but it's not clear right now like how to proceed or what we're doing or how to combine the properties together. So let's take all of the information that we know, all of these things that I've boxed off, and let's put them on a diagram. And then from that diagram, it's going to tell us how do we actually show that Y is related to A. So here's our diagram. We know that X is related to Z, so x points to z. We know that y is related to z, so y points to z. And then finally, we know that x is related to a, so x points to a. Our goal is to show that y is related to a. Put another way, can we get from y all the way to a? Well, not quite, because this arrow is going in the wrong direction. So if we could show that z was related to x, then yes, we could go here, then here, then here. So how do we get this arrow to show up? Well, it's by symmetry of the equivalence relation. We know that X is related to Z, so by symmetry, Z will be related to X. So now we can include that arrow. Now, if we have these three arrows, do we actually have an arrow that goes from Y to A? Yes, by transitivity. So since yz is in the equivalence class, equivalence relation, since zx is in the equivalence relation, and xa is in the equivalence relation, i.e. we just said that these three arrows are in there, then by using transitivity twice, we get that y is related to a, which is exactly what we want. You can prove the other subset direction by yourself. It's basically the same thing. Now, the thing to note here is that the diagram, you can erase this diagram and 
the what's re what remains will still be a formal proof, a complete proof. But without the diagram, it wouldn't have been so clear why we wrote down these steps. Like, we could have applied symmetry to any of these things uh, randomly if we wanted to, but that wouldn't have helped us, right? Like applying sy symmetry to this YZ edge would not have been helpful. But by, by looking at the diagram, it shows us where we're trying to get and what a plausible path is, how to get there. Finally, let's take a moment to reflect. What is the type of an equivalence class? Is an equivalence class a point, a set, a pair of points, a collection of pairs, or something else? How does the relation x is related to y if and only if y minus x is a multiple of 4 partition the set of integers? Finally, what is the standard, or sometimes people call this the canonical, representative we take for the equivalence class of 1215 using that usual rational uh, relation? Thank you very much, and have a good day.